Okay, we're going to do an example here of computing lateral earth pressures or forces, really, uh, in the active condition using Rankine, Rankine's theory. Okay, so we're going to begin drawing by drawing the wall. So we have a wall that looks like this. Now on the bottom we have a a footing, actually it's a strip footing because it extends very long, let's say, into the paper, okay? And that is used to support the wall. So this wall is called a cantilever wall. <clears throat> In the past you may have seen, uh, you know, walls drawn like that without a footing. And those dr walls are drawn to just to denote certain things and to explain what lateral uh, earth pressures are and things like that. But this is a more realistic, this is actually a realistic wall, okay? So let's say that you have a situation where the ground is like this, okay? And let's say that there is actually a different type of soil at this level, okay? And let's put dimensions here. So let's say that <coughs> this here is six meters, and from here down, uh, let's say this is three meters, it's not to scale, but that's okay. Let's call this a well-graded sand. Okay, and it has a fee of 38 degrees. This is a poorly graded sand, let's say, with a fee of 33 degrees. Okay, and the interface is here. Let's say that the footing value of B is equal to 3 meters. Let's say that this this part here, which is the toe, this is the heel and the toe, like a foot. Okay, let's say this is 0.5 meters. Let's say that this is also 0.5 meters. And let's say that this is, well, this would be 3 minus 0.5 minus 0.5, this is 2 meters. Okay, so this is what the wall looks like. This wall is made of concrete. Okay, and the question is, what is the net active force on the wall? Okay, so that's the first step, meaning, sorry, I forgot to draw the mod line over here. So this right here is the is a drawing of a, a, a wall, right? And so the question is, or let's say we are imagining this wall and kind of determining to see if this wall will work. So the first step, in any case, is to determine the force that is going to act on the wall, the net force, so that we can then determine if that's a proper wall to sustain that force. Okay, so here's our our problem, right? Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is what we have done in the past, I guess, in class, which is to make a plot of horizontal stress versus depth. And I extend the interface into that plot and also the end here of the wall which ends at the footing base into that plot. So now I say well let me start computing stresses. The vertical stress the vertical stress at the ground surface is zero. So zero times the, re the relevant k which would be k active because we're talking about the active case, right? Whatever the Ka is, 0 times that is 0. So the horizontal stress at the ground surface is 0. The horizontal stress 6 meters of depth into the profile, and by the way, we didn't put in the water here. Let's say the water is down here. Okay, so we'll start with dry conditions. If the water is here, that means there's no water up here. It may be moist, right? The soil may be moist, but let's assume that it's just dry. Okay, in this case, 
the unit weight of the top soil and the bottom soil, we assume it's 18, right? Kilonewton per meter cubed. So at 6 meters of depth, the vertical stress here, the vertical effective stress, is 6 meters times 18, right? So what is that? 104 kPa. 104 kPa. Now, the horizontal stress at this level is 104 times kA. So we need to compute kA. What is kA? Well, according to Rankine, kA is equal to tangent squared 45 minus phi over 2. So, for this soil, remember that we're talking about the stress at this level. So we're considering the soil above. So for this soil, Ka is 45 minus 33 over 2 tangent squared, 0.29. So the Ka for this soil is 0.29. So 0.29 times 104 Sorry, this is 108. Okay, so 0 0.29 times 108 is 30, basically 32. So the horizontal stress at this level is 32. Horizontal effective stress. So, sorry, I'm kind of moving this, but you get that. Okay, that's up to there. Now we have another interface, which is a made up interface because there's really no soil interface. This soil is the same as this soil. But we have a line here that, um, let's just not call it an interface, let's just call it a line. Okay, so this is, at this line, that's the end of the wall, that this is the last portion of the wall where the soil pushes laterally. Right? So the, the wall, the soil pushes on the wall here, 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 and here. Not below, because there's no wall, of course. So at this level, the end of the wall, what is the vertical stress? I shouldn't have drawn that little point there because I don't know where the horizontal stress is, right? We begin by vertical stress. The vertical stress is what? We have 6 meters plus 3 meters, that's 9 meters of soil. And we assume that the gamma of this is 18 and the gamma of that is 18, right? Because it's not given, so we assume that. So what's this? 162, right? So that's the vertical stress at this level. The horizontal stress at this level is Ka times this. Okay, but what Ka? The K of the soil above that line is this soil. So the Ka of this soil is tangent squared 45 minus 38 over 2. Okay? So 45, 38, 2 divided minus um, tangent, 0 0.24, 0 0.24, let me check that again, um, oh I'm sorry, this is not there, it's here, 0 0.24, Ka of this soil. Point two four. Okay. So, the horizontal stress is then at this level, the vertical times the k. So one sixty two times point two four. Thirty nine. Okay. So. Thirty nine. So you see now that the curve. Oh, that you can see there. The curve or the, the plot has two slopes. The slope changes because the Ka's are different. The slope changes here at this interface. Okay? Good. So now we have our stress diagram, but we want the net force. 
The net force is obtained by getting the area of this whole thing. Okay? Now what we should do is determine not only the net force, which is the, air, the complete area, but what we should do is we should divide this big area into parts that are easily, where the area is uh, easily calculated, like triangles and rectangles, and then that way we can, we can place different forces or the relevant forces with their relevant shapes. You'll see it's easier just to see what I'm, what I'm doing rather than to try to understand what I just said. So what I mean is this. Let's take this shape and make three shapes out of it. That's a triangle, this is a rectangle, and this is another triangle. For this part of the diagram, we know that the force acts here, one-third of the way up from the interface. Okay, So if this is six meters, this needs to be two meters. Here, the force, and of course this force, let's call it F1, the, is, is equal to the area of this triangle. This force, F2, is equal to the area of this triangle and it acts one-third of the way up, which means one meter because this is three meters, F2. And then F3 is the area of that rectangle and of course it acts through its centroid, F3. Okay, so let me move this a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to calculate the forces here now. F1 is one half base times height, right? One half, what's the base? 32. And the height, 6. Okay? F2, one half, the base is this. The base is 39 minus 32. and the height is 3. Yep. And then F3 is base times height. Base times height. So the base is 32 and the height is 3. So let me calculate those values. Okay, so here are the values. 96. They're kind of easy, actually easy to calculate by just by looking at it. But anyway, 96, uh, 100, uh, sorry, 10.5 <coughs> and 96 kilonewton meter each. So the net force is the sum of those three, <coughs> which is the area of the whole thing. And that is 202.5 kilonewton per meter. So the force is 202.5 kilonewton and that acts for every meter of wall into the paper. Okay, so that is a way to calculate, or this is an example, sorry, of how to calculate um, lateral earth pressures. Really, the, 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 the point here is to get the forces, the lateral forces acting on a cantilever wall. Okay? Oh, in this case, of course, you have two soils, one on the other, therefore you have to get two values of K active and again, the reason why we're saying active is because the, the soil is pushing the wall out and you basically have the wall here. I mean, that is to say that you have this wall there to um, prevent the wall, the soil from falling over into, let's say, an excavation or another property or anything like that. Okay.